This is an automatic skeleton experience farm. This is better than most skeleton experience farms because our precise timings allow the wolves to attack the skeletons while preventing the skeletons from ever shooting you or the wolves. It's also more convenient than most XP farms because the experience is fed to you while you AFK at other builds. This allows you to double up on the rewards from your AFK sessions like in a fish farm or enables new builds like mending tree farms or mending cobblestone farms. Before we get started, let's cover the resources. The base design is pretty cheap. The majority of the items are used in the timing controller and the mandatory sorting system. And you could get by with fewer water buckets, but it'd be much more tedious. First, I'm going to assume you've already found, cleared, and lit up a skeleton spawner. Now the skeleton spawn room is nine by nine by nine with the spawner two blocks down from the top. These two blocks on top of the spawner are important. It stops skeletons from spawning up here and getting stuck. Next, we're going to be making a two by seven trench. This trench will start immediately under your skeleton spawner. After that's finished, we're gonna spin around and make sure that the skeleton spawn room is in front of us. Then we're gonna dig straight up for 36 blocks, or 38, including the two that we just dug. You might wanna be a little careful here, make sure you don't dig into any lava pools, and bringing some scaffolding might help. Now we're gonna make sure that the skeleton spawner is still in front of us. Once we've done that, we're going to dig a two by 15 hallway, which will be two by 16, if you count the blocks that you dug on your way up. Now we're gonna dig straight down for 23 blocks, which again will be 25 blocks, including the two we just dug out. You're gonna be super careful doing this. You don't wanna come across any you know, open void or lava pit as you dig down. Next, we're gonna start with a wide shot for the AFK room itself. It's 11 blocks across the diameter, five blocks at the straight part, and then five blocks to the roof. Make sure as you dig this out to leave the tunnel around where the skeleton will fall. Next, we're gonna build a basement of sorts. This is going to house our item sorter. It's a nine by five by eight room, pretty simple. We're gonna first find the wall that is adjacent to the skeleton spawner, find the center point, then come into the third block and dig straight down for six blocks. Then we're gonna dig out four blocks on either side of our landing. This will give us our nine block wall. Then we're gonna to go to the edges, dig seven additional blocks in. That'll give us our eight block wall. And from there, it's a matter of breaking out all the blocks and then digging up to give us our five block ceiling. Next, we're gonna place the rails down that hold our wolves in place. We'll start out with the solid block, then two upside down slabs, and we're gonna put our rail down, but you'll notice how it's facing in the wrong direction. It needs to face into that slab, so we'll add another rail to correct the direction, and then we can destroy that placeholder block, put down a rail, placeholder block, slab, slab, and lastly, our final rail. Next, we'll move up and start on the redstone that controls the precise timing of those iron trap doors. Start out with a few solid blocks to give it us a nice flat build surface. Then a bunch of upside down slabs uh, along the same Y coordinate of those solid blocks. Then we're gonna throw in some jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns are great because we need light in this room. Obviously, we don't want mobs spawning in here, but we also need redstone current to pass through them. Next, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna place a one tick repeater facing inward, a piece of redstone dust, then two more one tick repeaters, then on the inside of this jack-o'-lantern, a redstone torch, then a four tick repeater, another four tick repeater, there's gonna be a lot of these, another four tick repeater, another four tick repeater, and another four tick repeater. Then we're gonna need three one tick repeaters, and these timings are very, very important. Now we can destroy these four blocks and only these four blocks. This will make way for some redstone. We'll place some redstone down, connecting that redstone torch from earlier to the front of that very first redstone repeater. Lastly, we'll drop down and place the iron trap doors on the front underside of those blocks. You could also place some glass in the corners here. I didn't because it's not necessary, but you could if it makes you feel more comfortable. Next, we're gonna work on that mandatory sorting system in the basement. We're gonna come immediately under where your skeletons drop and create a two by three platform, then create a back to that two by three platform with some levers on it, and don't forget to power the levers. We're gonna spin around to the front. We're gonna extend out two blocks over one block and then down one block. Destroy those three placeholders. Then we're gonna place down nine hoppers 
chaining into each other. This is going to be really important. Make sure that your placement of your hoppers is correct here. Three more solid blocks, then create a three by three uh, pattern of rails just like this with three hopper minecarts on top of it. Now we're going to come to the front of the design, look at the back left hopper, and then place a jack-o-lantern on the floor immediately below it. Block over from that, place another jack-o-lantern, two solid blocks on top, so we can place our redstone comparators on top of those. Place two hoppers feeding into those redstone comparators, two repeaters on the floor directly into those jack-o-lanterns, four more solid blocks with redstone dust on all of them. Then we're going to spin around to the front, redstone torch on both of the jack-o-lanterns, place down two junk blocks, and we'll put chests on top of those, and then two hoppers feeding into the back of those two chests. Now we're going to work on the overflow protection for the item storage. Uh, this will trash any items that don't fit into the chest or aren't sortable, so bows and pieces of armor. We're going to place down a dropper facing directly into some lava. It's really simple stuff. Now we're going to create a little platform here and place a bunch of solid blocks. A comparator set to subtract mode coming out of that solid block that's immediately next to our dropper with three pieces of redstone dust next to that. Now we're going to set up the filters. This is ridiculously easy. Open up that first hopper that's feeding into the comparator, four signs in the second through fifth slot, and then add your bones. And then we'll just repeat the same thing for the second hopper with arrows. Again, it's very important that those signs go into the second through fifth slot. Now you can see that our bones and arrows are being sorted appropriately, and anything that's not a bone or arrow will be dispensed into lava. Next, we want to get all of our wolves in position, but before we start, I do want to make a note that we will be using standing wolves and not sitting wolves. However, this is super easy to fix. If you do push a sitting wolf into a cart, you just right click and they stand right up. After that, we're going to place down three powered rails, um, some way to power them, pointing at the holder rail, I don't know what you would call that, the, the position where the wolf is going to chill for the entirety of its life. You're going to point him towards that and then just push your wolf in. And it's super easy to get these guys loaded. Now once you've got that last wolf in position, you're just going to come up behind yourself and clean up the mess you made, delete all the rails, and break all the blocks. And at this point we are ready to open the floodgates and let all the skeletons and experience flow in. We're going to start out by placing four open fence gates on the back four blocks of that trench. Then we're going to drop down, we're going to replace the last block of the trench with soul sand, place two open fence gates immediately before it, destroy the two blocks immediately past it, and then place an open fence gate in that space. Then we're going to dig three blocks down and place a closed fence gate, and this is very important that it is closed. From this point, we're ready to add the water in the proper spawn room, so four uh, water source blocks into each one of the corners, and then one more water source block at the back of our trench. Now things are about to get a little bit more complicated. You remember all of those water buckets that we said we needed right at the beginning of the video? Yeah, now's when we need those. We're going to be making a pure water source column. That's the word, column. I was thinking like upward tunnel. No, that's not right. A column of water source blocks straight up. Upon reaching the top, we're going to take a quick look around, make sure that no mobs have spawned. We don't want a creeper exploding. We'll place one more water source block. Then we'll go to the end of the hallway and place an open fence gate above our drop tube. Uh, another open fence gate right where that water stream ends. Another open fence gate right above the ending of the water stream. And then where those two open fence gates meet, a water source block. This creates like a seamless stream to push our skeletons forward. And we can now drop down the hole, I recommend feather falling, and back into our AFK room. From here, we're going to quickly step back into the mob spawner room itself and destroy all of the lighting. With that gone, skeletons will be able to start spawning, and it's only a matter of time before they start, you know, being murdered in mass by your wolves, feeding you tons and tons of experience. At this point, I'd like to make a couple of notes about the build. Just because we have this fancy timer doesn't mean that our wolves can't take any damage. Skeletons can have thorns and thorns can kill a wolf on a long enough time scale. 
That means that before and after every AFK session, you should be healing your wolves. Rotten flesh is probably your best bet. Additionally, this farm is ready to go right now. You could use it as a standalone experience farm, but it really is designed to be used in conjunction with another AFK farm, like an AFK fish farm or AFK cobblestone farm. The idea is you place your AFK point for any of those other farms anywhere inside this circle, and you'll double up on the rewards from your AFK sessions. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to support me on Patreon like all these wonderful people have. I gotta eat too, and uh, rotten flesh doesn't do as much for me as it does the wolves. Thanks so much for watching Nim's Toots, and hopefully it didn't stink.